Standardized tests can have a huge impact on where you end up in academia. Um, so whether you like it or not, it's good to take them seriously, um, whether you're applying to med school, residency, or whatever, right? Um, I am not a natural test taker. I did not ace my SATs, um, but in med school, I learned this method that I adapted to my own habits and, and study schedule that allowed me to score between the 95, 95th and 99th percentile on step one and step two CK. So I hope this can help you too. Um, so let's get started. The core of this method is making an honest schedule that you can stick to, all right? So the, the first thing you need to figure out is how long do I have to study for this test, all right? Sometimes for these big standardized tests, you have you know weeks or even months to study. Um, it, it's gonna be different for every person, so I'm just giving an example of if you had this amount of time, okay? So this is how it works. Let's say you have five weeks to study for the test you're, you're going for. That's 35 days. One important thing about this schedule is you need to schedule your days off you need to schedule your breaks. You cannot go five weeks or, or more without taking a day off, all right? You, you'll take the day off whether you schedule it or not, so you might as well schedule it, all right? So let's say you take off one day a week, that's 35 minus five, you're down to 30 days, all right? 30 study days. Then you gotta think about, are you really gonna learn anything in the two days before the standardized test? No, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna be thinking about stuff, So don't even plan on learning anything during that time, right? So 30 minus two is 28. Then um, I like to separate out the practice test days from the core study days. So let's say you have three practice test days that you're planning on doing, and on the days you take a practice test, you just spend all day going over it. It's a whole big thing. So. You have 28 days left minus three practice tests. Now you're left with 25 days. So you really have, down from five weeks, you've got 25 study days left, all right? Um, I like to divide my days into three different study sessions. Again, do this math for your schedule, all right? But in this example, I'm saying, all right, let's say you have three two-hour study sessions per day, all right? So three sessions per day times 25 days, you now have 75 study sessions. Now you have a number you're saying, okay, these are the different sessions that I can use to study. And for tests like step one, step two, uh, there are different topics that are being studied. And so we're deciding right now that every session that you have, every study session, every two hour study session, is gonna be focused on studying for one single topic, okay? Um, so you're gonna assign each of these two hour study sessions a single topic, all right? So now we've quantified our time that we actually have to study. So you've done step one, you, you've, or you've done the, the first step in this method, which is to quantify how much time do I really have to study? Now that we have that first step, we can say, all right, how do I want to use that study time? All right, so that's the first and most important part. Make your time frame, okay? So we're gonna set there for a second, all right? Now, now we're gonna move on to the, the next step, which is make your calendar, all right? So you quite literally want to schedule out every day of study, all right? So let's say you have your calendar, you just make it up, mark it down, you say, okay, I wanna take, let's say, a practice test in the beginning, middle, and towards the end, and let's say you're, you know, you've got your break days on your calendar already, uh, and then you've taken out the first couple days, or the last couple days before your final test, so, and you know, make this around whatever calendar you have and say, all right, so these are the days that I actually have to do these three sessions per day, all right? So now we've made our calendar, all right? 
Next, what do we put into the calendar? All right, how do we decide what we're studying? All right, so it, 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 again, this all depends on what kind of test you're taking. For something like step one and step two, there's actually specific topics that they tell you they're gonna give you. There's like, I don't know what it is now, but something like 10 or 15, 16 topics. Um, for an example here, let's say there's five or, or, or six topics. I just listed some, some possible topics right here. Farm, cardio, GI, ID, neuro, and heme. List out the topics that you need to cover or that are going to be included in your test. And then rank those topics in how good you feel about them, all right? So if you feel like you're an all-star in pharmacology, but you don't know anything about hematology, you put farm first and, and heme last, all right? So you rank the subjects that, because you're gonna be better prepared for some than others even before studying, all right? That's just how it goes. Then once you have them ranked, we, all, we already have our number of study sessions that we just calculated, right? We've got 75 study sessions to distribute among these, uh, these things, right? These different topics. So you're gonna then assign, say, okay, I'm gonna assign the most number of study sessions to the topics that I am, or I feel least prepared for. All right, so again, if I was to distribute 75 sessions over six, let's say, you know, I did like, like 20 sessions for heme and then five for farm, mix up in between so that by the end of executing this plan, you will have studied most for the topics that you are least prepared for, right? This is the idea that, you know, you're not gonna be the same prepared for each topic, right? So. You give your numbers, you say, okay, these are the different um, numbers of sessions. You have five farm, five cardio, 20 neuro, etc. that you then put back onto your calendar, right? So we made this nice pretty calendar where we put in our rest days, we put in our practice tests. Now, write down or, you know, type into your Google Calendar or whatever, which sessions, let's say you have three sessions a day, which sessions on which days are going to be for each subject. Distribute all of your 75 study sessions on your calendar, right? You can do whole days, days in a row on a single topic if you think that works best for you, or you can do kind of a, an approach where you just intermingle the different topics, right? That kind of depends on you. I don't think it necessarily makes difference either way, but you know, so, so be you, modify it for what makes sense to you. If you want to have a group of days on one session or one, one topic, then, then do it like that and do it for all of those. But so what we've done now is we've quantified the number of sessions that we have to study. We've made a calendar, right? And we've assigned a number of sessions to each of the topics that correlates which, with how much we need to study for each topic, all right? We're just, it, these are, this is simple stuff. We're just studying more for the things that we're worst at, all right? So then you write down on your calendar which session, sessions are for which day. This way you have something to follow, all right? The idea is that if you have this regimented calendar when you're actually in the meat of your studying, you don't wanna be spending extra brain power trying to decide, oh, should I study this today? Oh, should I study that today? Um, that's, that's wasted brain power. You do your planning now, do your planning before you start, then you have your calendar and you can just follow it, all right? You no longer need to question it because since you've assigned all of your topics, You've already said, I'm gonna study this much for this thing before even starting. You can trust that by the end of this period, you're going to have studied proportionally for each topic, all right? So that's the core of how you study for a lot of different topics over a long period of time without getting lost and forgetting something, all right? So that's the basic 
core of how we do this, right? So now I'm going to move on to some, some pitfalls, right? You won't master anything, and you shouldn't master anything. If you attain mastery of one of these subjects, <clears throat> in my view, you've wasted time, all right? Because these tests are typically not tests of, are you an expert in this or that field? It's a test of how much you know about the whole world of these different topics, the whole world of medicine, all right? so. The goal is to get pretty good at all of the topics. And if you're pretty good at all the topics, you're less likely to see things that are totally unfamiliar to you, right? As opposed to if you master one topic and that happens to not be represented well on the test, then you're out of luck if that's not, you know, representing your score very well, all right? So the idea here is you've distributed all these things you do not want to master anything, right? You wanna be pretty good at everything, right? Again, I've said this before, schedule your breaks, all right? You will take breaks, right? So it's best to schedule them. If you just pretend like you're gonna study all day, you will, you'll have no idea how much you're actually studying, right? Set a timer, right? Time yourself, right? If you say you're going to have three two-hour sessions, then when that session starts, let's say you're doing you know, 7 to 9 a.m., then you punch your timer, you do your work for that two hours, and when that two hours is up, no matter if you're in the middle of a problem or you still don't understand something, you're done, all right? You stop because you have to stick to your schedule. Your schedule is what will keep you from falling behind. It will keep you advancing in all these different topics that you need to cover, right? You're not gonna master everything, right? So set timers, schedule your breaks, exercise, all right? Everybody knows that exercise helps you retain information. I would always schedule in the morning after my morning study session a run to kind of go out and just let things percolate in my brain as I'd run around, right? So make sure you're eating and exercising, right? But those are the main pitfalls. Other things that I haven't touched much on are the tools you use to study. Um, so a little bit on that. In my opinion, you should be using question banks, textbooks, or study guides that are made for the test and practice tests, all right? All of these are hugely important. Um, every test, th th there's new stuff coming out all the time. Back in my day, it was like, you know, you were old, there was first aid, was a good text. I'm sure there's new stuff. The USMLE will like put out set practice tests. So if you're studying for a step, use the practice test that the US USMLE puts out, all right? That's, that's good stuff right there, you should use them. Um, what you should not do in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, some people like this, is don't use flashcards, all right? I really think flashcards are a waste of time. Um, I think the time you spent in making them and is disproportionate to the good that they can do you. Um, I, I just, I, I, I don't think they're a good idea. I know some people really like Anki. I even tried Anki for a little bit. I, I don't think it's a good use of time. Um, I don't think you make the same connections looking at the same thing over and over versus really trying to get into problem solving modes with questions or like reading the narrative of how does this disease or whatever fit into the context that you get from reading textbooks and study guides. So I'm, I'm not big on, on the whole Anki and flashcard stuff, so. That's what I'd say about that. So overall, this is a standardized way to approach standardized tests. And I hope it helps.